Good afternoon to all my wonderful viewers out there and welcome back to another top 5 video. In today's video I'm going to be covering my top 5 favourite palace pieces that released in their spring 2021 collection. Yes guys, palace's spring 2021 collection has come to an end. How do we know this? Well, they're literally posting teaser photos saying, uh, summer 2021. <laughs> so this Friday, there is no palace drop today. Actually, I totally forgot it was even Friday. There is no palace drop today. Uh, we are in the off season. So we are waiting for Palace to drop their next season, which obviously will be their summer 2021 collection. Now, I feel like next Monday, they're going to post the uh, lookbook. That's what I think they're going to post. And then maybe less than 24 hours after the lookbook, maybe early Tuesday, we will get the drop list for week one. So in that time, in between this little off season, I thought, let's talk about my top five favorite items from the spring 2021 collection. And I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section below as well, on what your favorite items from this season was. How we'll do it is obviously we'll go from my least favorite to most favorite, and I'll cover the reasons why I thought these were really, really cool pieces. Now, obviously they're gonna differ from, you know, what you guys think of the top five pieces, and that's why I really wanna hear in that comment section below what you guys thought were the best pieces this season. But let's jump right in. Let's go have a look at what my fifth favorite item that dropped this season was. Okay, let's kick it off, guys. My fifth favorite item from Palace's Spring 2021 season is going to go to the Born to Bun t-shirt. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Palace t-shirts. They're a little bit pricier in my... Well, I have come so accustomed to buying Uniqlo tees at like 20 bucks, where I'm like, a Palace tee? It better be a pretty damn good graphic to convince me to spend more than that to buy the tee. And this was actually one of them. So the Born to Bun tee was a little bit of a um, homage to Bruce Springsteen's seventh uh, studio album that released in 1984, Born in the USA. Uh, it references it by using the album artwork from Bruce Springsteen's album, and then Palace has obviously done a little spin on that. So instead of, I think it's a rag in Bruce's pocket, Palace has grabbed one of their iconic uh, P logo caps and shoved it in the pocket instead. So, I mean, I thought it was just really cool. I was just like, hey, look at that. There's a little reference right there. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, that's a cool tee because I like uh, band tees and stuff like that. So, a Palace X band tee? I thought that was kind of cool. I just thought it was a cool tee. It came out in heaps of colors. It's still available on the store page now. Not many people actually picked it up. They didn't think, uh, you know, it was cool like I did. So, Maybe I do just need to pull the plug. Maybe I just need to cop it. Because, it, I don't know, I just think it's a really cool piece in like either the white or the grey. And yeah, I had to put it at number five. I, I felt like it deserved a little bit of recognition for being one of the best items this season. I don't know if you guys will agree with me on that, but I thought it was really cool and it's going to go at spot number five. Now, that is the only t-shirt that's going to be in this top five, guys. Because I hate to spoil it, but that's the only t-shirt going to be in this top five. But we'll move on over now, spot number four, and see what I put there. So at number four, we have a hoodie that I think from memory featured in the lookbook, I want to say. I don't remember. what. I feel like it did. I feel like it did. What we are having at number four is the satin hoodie. Uh, this is a hoodie that features a cursive pa uh, palace logo done in the textile that I don't know the name of, but it's iconic. You see it featured everywhere, uh, especially in a lot of American brands and American culture in general. This, this art style or this text style is very, very big. If you know what it's called, let me know in that comment section below, but it is iconic. And I really liked it because, well, Palace did this logo and they could have done what a lot of brands do where they just print it. They just print it on, you know, a palace hoodie and that would be it. But they went to a little bit more effort and I kind of like that. They went to doing an applique piece on it instead. So uh, my favorite color of it was the white one and it features a blue uh, text being appliqued onto the chest. And then the, I think it's an orange or maybe an orangey red is then embroidered around the letters to give it a nice little outline finish there. It also features like a little patch, kind of like how my champion logo, uh, sorry, my champion hoodie here has a little patch down here. I, 
Don't know why they chose to do that. Palace generally doesn't put anything on the sleeves like that, but hell, I ain't going to complain. It's just a nice little patch down there. <laughs> but yeah, it was just like a really cool like staple piece that you could wear with literally anything. It was like the easiest piece that you could wear. It wasn't out there. It was simple, clean, easy. And I really liked that. Unfortunately, I didn't like all the colors that it dropped in. I only liked a few of them, which was the white and the green one. So that's the reason it's going at spot number four because the item at number three which we'll now move on over to i had to give this one number three purely because i thought all the colors of this piece were so much better but i literally had them neck and neck and i was like nah this one should be number three because i liked all the colors of it while the satin hoodie I only like two of the colors of it. so that's why i've justified that so let's go check out piece number three and see which piece i'm referring to now for number three, I'm going to give it to the Sugar Coaches Jacket. <laughs> One of the big pieces that I definitely remember being showcased in the lookbook. So this is a Coaches Jacket, which features uh, the iconic Gatorade logo. And then Palace has obviously redone it where it's Alice on it instead. I've, I mean, it's very classic. I, I've very much liked it now. Initially, when I first saw this piece, I was a little bit skeptical because Palace could just make a coach's jacket that was pretty eh, and then they could screen print the graphics onto the piece. I didn't have a, you know very high expectations, but then when it actually released, they embroidered the graphic on the left breast here, and they embroidered the huge graphic on the back of it as well. What I really liked about it, as well as I mentioned before when we were covering item number four, is that every color hit. They had it in navy, they had it in white, they had it in green and black, I want to say. Either way, all the colors that they released it in really, really hit. It just worked really, really well. And also, as a nice little touch that Palace added, I don't own a lot of coaches' jackets, by the way, but the ones that I have purchased way back in the day, they didn't have any inner linings, they were pretty crappy quality. But then I noticed that Palace, it looks like they've done some sort of like cotton interior. Kind of like how they've just like, it's, it looks like they've just put like a shirt on the inside as an interior. Which I think is a nice little touch because the material, the exterior material, I know how coaches jackets feel and it's not really comfortable having that as an interior material. So having a nice little cotton buffer in between that is really, really nice. I like the little details they've put into it. I just think it's a super sick piece where all the details, they could have done it really, really cheaply and they could have skipped that out, out on it all, but they didn't. Alice put the time in, they embroidered the graphics, they put a nice inner lining into the piece, and they released it in some really, really nice colors. So, you know, it's just thumbs up after thumbs up after thumbs up. It's a really, really solid piece. And to some of you, it might even be your favorite piece releasing this season. Understandably as well, though, really, really good. Now we only have two more pieces to cover. We're in the top three now. Let's move on to my second favorite item that released in the spring season. Now moving into piece number two, God, I actually feel really bad because piece number two and one, I can't highlight as much as I just highlighted piece number three. <laughs> but I don't know, man, piece number two and one, they spoke to me more. Like they, I could see myself wearing these pieces more than I could see myself wearing piece number three, even though I just constantly gave piece number three like the best review and I should like put it at number one. I don't know, piece number two and one, I could see myself wearing these day to day. So number two, it's gonna go to the Fly Hoodie. Now, uh, this released in a series of colors, most of them pretty good, I actually quite like most of them, but the one that I liked the most was the gray one. The gray one had a green triferg on the front and on the back, and it featured flies all over it. Now, just like the Sugar Coaches jacket, Alice could have skipped out on the quality. They could have screen printed this, it still would have been nice, but nowhere near as good as what they actually did. So they did a raised print for the Triferg, and I'm a little unsure on what the Triferg is actually meant to be, because it's given like a, a rugged edge to it. Is it meant to be like turd, because there's flies there, and flies come to turd, or is it like a bush in this case, because it's green? I'm a little bit unsure on what it's actually meant to be. Let me know in that comment section below if you have an idea of what it could be, but I'm a little bit confused by that. But yes, and then the flies. Could have screen printed the flyers on the back in front of it. Easy peasy, no issues. But no, they embroidered the flyers onto the piece. So you can feel the flyers wherever they are all over the piece. 
I just thought it was really, really cool. I just thought that was a cool idea. I like that both they went with the raised print for the trifergs on it and the embroidery for the little flies on it. I really like that. The color combos are really solid as well. As I mentioned, even if the gray one is my favorite, there are a bunch of other colors that released that were also really solid as well. I just thought it was a really cool Triferg piece this season, and I felt like I had to at least give one Triferg piece a spot in this list. Because there was like 10 of them, I had to pick one of them that was alright this season. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I swear to god there wasn't a week this season that we did not get a Triferg. I swear every single week had one. We could probably go back and watch my drop list videos and see if that's the case, but yeah. Crazy Triferg season this season. And I just like the fly one. The fly one really spoke to me. But that's going to go at number two, guys. So we'll uh, move on. Drum roll, please. And have a look at what my favorite item this season was. Item number one. Drum roll, please, guys. What could it be? What could be my favorite item that released in Palace's Spring 2021 season? Well, I feel like if you watched my Streetwear Talk video where I covered the lookbook, I think you have an idea of what I was really, really feeling. Uh, this piece... It went above and beyond in the use of materials, just the overall effort put into it. It just, it, it had everything. Um, I didn't actually like any of the other colors that it released in. I only liked one of the colors, but this color was like amazing. This is a piece that I really, really praised in that video. It was just really, really good. It's gonna go to the fleeced hoodie, which I know a lot of you are probably like, ah, oh, what, this is a whack ass item. Why wasn't the coach's jacket number one or something like that? <laughs> well, I'll dive into it. I really like patchwork stuff. So when I saw that Palace was doing a patchwork piece, I was like, yo, that's kind of cool. I, I'm really interested in that. Then on top of that, the hoodie is also a different material and color to the rest of the piece. The hoodie is a Sherpa hood with what looks like a Sherpa lining on the inside as well. To match the Sherpa color of the hood, we have the text on the chest, which is also, you guessed it, Sherpa as well, with a nice embroidery outline around each of the letters. Then, looking at the piece itself, you notice that it's got different colors placed all over the piece. You thought, ah, oh, maybe they've just dyed it in different sections. No, they've cut out individual pieces of fabric and sewn them all together to have this patchwork look. On top of that, you get a little triferg patch down the left hand arm there, which I think, unconfirmed, is 3M material. But that might be unconfirmed, it might just simply just be a triferg. I thought the logo on the chest was really cool. I thought the use of color was really cool and I like this I think they called it the peach and blue because it has a little bit of peach just above the pocket and has a lot of blue all over it but I just thought it was a really well colored piece well put together piece and I liked its use of crazy materials quite interestingly as well the hoodie is a button-up hood so you can button it up a little bit if you're a little bit colder and you don't want your neck exposed in the in the winter seasons and stuff I don't know, I just thought it was a really, really cool piece, and it was very different from the rest of the season. Like, it stood out. Like, as much as there's hoodies with crazy and amazing graphics that came out this season, this piece took it above and beyond and did something very different. I just really liked it, and that's why I'm putting it at number one. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably won't agree with me on my list, but I want to definitely hear from you guys. How do you feel about my top five list? Are there any items that I listed off that you picked up from the season? Or are there any that you are now interested in because I mentioned them in this top five video? Let me know down in that comment section below. But that's it guys. That is my top five favorite items from the Palace Spring 2021 season. I want to hear from you guys and what your top five favorite items are down in that comment section below. And also, how do you feel about the Spring 2021 season in general? I thought it was a really good season. Every single week had an item that I was at least somewhat interested in. And the collaborations were really cool. The Stella Artois collaboration was really cool. The Naughties collaboration was really cool. Uh, what else did we get in this season as well? I don't remember the other collaborations, but those two are definitely the ones that really stuck out. The last week with the um, the archaeology stuff really kicked off. Yeah, they just had really, really good pieces releasing this season. A lot of stuff for everyone. I want to hear how you feel about the season and your top five favorite items down in that comment section below. And of course, if you guys want me to keep covering upcoming Palace Weeks, the upcoming lookbook for their new season, don't forget to leave a big old like on this video. 
comment in the comment section down below and a subscribe to the channel as we're also trying to aim for a new subscriber milestone of 2,960 subscribers for the end of April. We're literally one sub off guys. We're like, it's literally one. Just tell one mate to subscribe and then we can finally hit that milestone before the end of the month. But that's everything I got to say about week uh, oh, I was going to say week. No, that's what I'm going to say about all the weeks. <laughs> that's what I got to say about the whole Palace Spring 2021 season and my top five favorite items from it, guys. So until these next Streetwear Talk video, until the next Palace video, until the next Droplist video in general, guys, I'll catch you later.